is a presentation that will allow you to get uh, irrigated land group credit. Uh, you need two hours of education per year. Today, if you're here, you're getting one hour. And also, I have a code for the CCA, um, which is not this yet. This is to sign up for email updates. I received a couple of phone calls yesterday and today of people that asked me how to uh, attend this meeting. So if you sign up for these email updates here on this code on the left, then you will get a flyer. And instead, if you are a CCA, thank, thanks to Lee, and this is the only picture that I could find on the internet uh, uh, of Lee, together with Dr. Beckerman of, of Purdue. I hope I don't get him in trouble with his wife by showing this picture publicly. But thank you, Lee. Thank you, Lee. We really appreciate him. Thanks to his uh, suggestion, now you can get uh, CCA uh, CUs, and all you have to do is to scan this code. And now that I'm done with the housekeeping, we are going to start with the presentation. These are the goals. I'm told that, Jerry, you have to present what the, goal, the learning goals for the day are. So this is where this um, slide comes from. We're going to learn how to measure pressure. We're going to learn why pressure changes in a pipe, why if there is a main line that is that is underground here and is taking water to this sprinkler and to this sprinkler, why, why do I measure pressure that is lower here than there? What are the principles that make pressure change uh, as it travels in a pipe? We're going to talk about how pressure affects flow rate and application rate, and, and these are two variables that we really worry a lot about in irrigation because that's what determines how long we run our irrigation system then we were supposed to have a hands-on activity but nobody's here so i'm gonna i'm gonna have it myself and i guess i'm gonna show you from with the with the camera from home how to do the hands-on activity and then we're gonna finish by uh talking a little bit about pressure regulators and then i'm gonna challenge you challenge you um to um guess or to uh, make an educated guess on a question and if you do you will win ten dollars so uh, the first slide that i want to show is this infamous infamous slide that i've showed you a million times um that is about the operating pressure of uh, different irrigation systems who wants to answer anybody at home wants to answer just go ahead and mute yourself and tell me just tell me or put it in the chat or or try or pretend that you are engaged. So even if you refuse categorically, categorically to present, to pretend that you are engaged, um, I will kind of um, help you guess it, help you guess it. So if you have a drip system, probably probably you can guess that you don't need a lot of pressure, right? You just need that little pressure that 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 needs to push out that drop out of this out of the spaghetti tube. If you have a micro sprinkler, maybe I guess you need a little bit more pressure because you you gotta spray that water uh, to the, uh, at least to the end of that pot, right? So you gotta spray it how much six inches away, eight inches away. So here probably you need a little pressure. Here probably you need a little bit more pressure. Micro sprinklers, maybe more because you got to squirt it maybe 15 feet away. And impact sprinklers, a lot more pressure, right? Because you got to, you got to spray it, you got to, you got to squirt it all the way to the next sprinkler head that is 30 feet away, right? So even if you don't know anything, if you don't know anything about the irrigation systems, you can probably guess that, that the drip has lower pressure and the micro sprinkler are somewhere in between. And the impact sprinklers are, are 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 higher pressure, right? So now you have them all ranked. So now the only thing that you have to decide if they're A, B, and C or B, C, and D, right? Anybody wants to guess? Anybody wants to guess? All right, all right, Jim. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Jim. We really appreciate your contribution. And Jim is right. Jim is right. Too bad that I wasn't offering $10 this time, but Jim is really right. And so... 
sometimes I have I have interaction with with um, with uh, irrigators and I give them my gauge and and this person was measuring 93 psi this other person was measuring 5 psi so this is too much it doesn't matter even the irrigation system that they're using and this was too low so and these are smart hard working people but just since they didn't have a thing like this that is a pressure gauge and the way to measure that pressure they were unable to run their irrigation system appropriately if you have no idea and if you don't even want to guess, uh, you can also ask the manufacturer of your irrigation system and you can go online and the, the, the brands are not too many and, and you can find the, the particular model of your sprinkler, of your spray stick, of your drip tape. And you'll see that they will tell you, for example, this impact sprinkler here in this table, they tell us, look, 25 PSI, 35 PSI, 60 PSI. So they're telling us that this particular impact sprinkler works in this range of pressures. Uh, this is a drip tape. And here they tell us the flow rate. You see here it says at 10 PSI. So now we know that the now we know that this drip tape is supposed to run at 10 PSI. These stream nozzles, uh, they show us from 20 to 75, but then they grade out the 40 and 50 and, and somewhere they say, well, that's the recommended pressure. So they're trying to tell us, look, it will work at 20, it will work at 75, but the best is if you run it around 45, 40 to 50. And the same with spray sticks, right? 15, 20, 25. So the point is the, the, the manufacturer will tell you, will tell you what the pressure that your drippers or emitters, um, they need to run at. And then when you go in the field, you can have one of these pressure gauge, like in these pictures that was installed here on this uh, PVC line. But the problem is that the, the, the sun shines on it, the workers kick it, the birds poop on it, the, the, the temperature goes up and down. And typically when I see this in the field, they don't work. And this particular irrigator, they were irrigating with spray stakes. They were looking at this and were saying, well, it's a little, the needle is a little below 20. We must be at around 15, we should be okay. And I said, well, let's try and measure it with mine. And then we went there with mine, with this one, and we measure five PSI, like you see in this picture. So don't trust, don't trust that gauges that you leave there 24 seven, 365 days a, a, a year, but buy only one, only one, an expensive one and keep it in your toolbox. It's a sensitive instrument, but it's also, um, it's also uh, uh, very uh, easy to damage. And so uh, it's important that you give one of these to each of your irrigators and they keep it and they keep it in the in the toolbox. And instead of having one of these at each valve, what you can do is install these things that are called Schrader valves that are exactly the same as those that you have in your car. I hope you can see them from home. It's exactly the same thing that you have in the in the tire of your car. And this thing you can buy for $2, $2 compared to a pressure cage like this, it maybe costs $30. So you can afford, you can afford a lot more of these and get only one pressure gauge. And then you go, you go, you go, you push this towards the, 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 sh the shredder valve, exactly like you do at the gas station when you're trying to measure your, your, um, the pressure of your tires and you're trying to inflate them. So, um, how do you measure pressure? Again, with a pitot tube, that is this other thing that I have here, you can buy it. Uh, this is a website that uh, nobody will be able to guess what website is this that says frequently bought together and here it says prime. And you can buy this, it costs $20. And, and basically it's just a little tube just a little tube that you attach to a, a another gauge like this. You attach it here, and then you do like I'm doing here in the in the picture here. You walk to to your impact sprinkler if you have impact sprinklers, and basically you put this inside the nozzle while you're irrigating, and that's the way that you measure the pressure of the water that's coming out of the nozzle. So if you have impact sprinkler, buy this pitot tube and buy a pressure gauge. And these are the same threads. They are quarter inch and PT threads, and they fit perfectly on these threads that you see here with uh, with blue Teflon, and they go together. And if you get in trouble, if you don't know what to buy, give me a call or email me. If you have drip tape, 
or drip hose, you can scan this code and we'll take you to a YouTube video that teaches you how to make these fittings like this one, like this one, again, where I put this shredder valve again. And on the other side, you can connect it to your to your polyethylene hose. So then you put this, this at the end and you measure pressure on this side again. If you want to measure pressure in the middle of the hose, or the hose is, is a lot larger, instead you can scan this other code where I teach you how to make these other things that now I cannot find. They must be somewhere. Here they are. This little tubing. And again, you punch a hole in the in the in the polyethylene hose, and this little tubing at the end has the shred shredder valve. So, however you decide to install the shredder valve, it's important that you find the way to install that shredder valve. And finally, you can also install it on the PVC. Like for example, this is a PVC elbow, and you can drill it with a drill like this. And this was supposed to be the the hands-on activity that we're gonna do today all together. And then with the with the with a tool like this that is called a tap, a tap is something that allows you to cut threads, to cut threads. So first you drill a hole here, and then with this thing you cut the threads, and you cut the threads that are exactly the same size as this shredder valve. So it allows you to make threads, to make female female threads, on the on the PVC. So you can put this there. And then later, of course, you drill it when there is no pressure, right? You drill it when you're not irrigating. And then later you turn on the water. And while you're irrigating, you can measure pressure. Are there any questions from home about this? Please put them in the chat. Please put them in the chat. But now I want to talk about the principles. The principles. I hope you can see my title from home. I want to hide this. I want to hide this. I want to talk about some principles that um, that decide how pressure changes in a pipe. So the first one, the first one, my meeting will end in ten minutes. Don't say that. Tasha, help. Okay, we'll we'll deal with it in ten minutes. Stick with me. Stick with me. Join if you if 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 it kicks you out. Join the same one again. Um. So the first principle is elevation, right? You know that when you when you swim in a pool, the deeper you go, the higher the pressure, right? And so this is this is something caused by gravity, by the weight of of water that is above your head, and it's true in a pool, but it's also true in an irrigation system, and it's true whether water is moving or not. And these are the conversion factors. If you are if you are if you are swimming with ten meters of water above your head, then that corresponds to fourteen psi or 23 feet corresponds to 10 PSI or 10 feet to, to 4 PSI. And this, I put this picture because here there's this upper upper block that is being irrigated and this lower block, all things being equal, if the difference in elevation between these two blocks is 23 feet, then this block at the bottom will have a pressure that is 10 PSI higher than the one at the top. So and so and so the flow rate coming out of the sprinklers will be higher, and so then the irrigation will be not even, and then the irrigator will have to run the lower block for 10 minutes and the latter and the upper block for a longer time because it has less pressure. But in reality, how do we deal with this? We install a pressure regulator at the lower block where you have more pressure, and so you equalize the pressures. So any any questions about this idea of, of elevation, like more, more more elevation you have above your head the more pressure you have okay now i i hit i hit everything i cannot see the chat anymore but tasha will tell me i'm sure she will tell me and so um now i want to ask a question so consider this vessel this big vessel that is really fat and has a big volume of of water in it and consider this other vessel that is skinny and small and is, is tall the same, but it has less water in it. Which one will have a higher pressure at the bottom? Who wants to tell me in the chat? Who wants to tell me in the chat? 
Somebody sends the larger. Any other questions? Any other answers? So this is known as Pascal paradox. And if you think that is not that is counterintuitive, you're not alone. You're not alone, and it's truly a paradox. And when I was and was uh, when I was a young student, and they presented this idea, I, I just couldn't accept it. Just couldn't accept it. But it turns out, it turns out that it doesn't matter. It can be big, it can be small, it can be skinny, it can be shaped like this, like a flask. It can be upside down. It does not matter. It's not that if it has a lot of volume, then it will have a lot of pressure. There are two different things. They have two. They have. There are two different things. So the pressure at the bottom of this thing will be exactly the same as it is at the bottom of this other one. The only thing that affects the pressure is this. The pressure is this H. It is H. So it's, it says pressure is the same at the bottom of all containers. So you could have cheated. You could have cheated by reading the 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 figure and gave me and giving me the answer. Right? Did I convince you? And and again. It's called the Pascal's paradox. It's a paradox. It sounds it sounds weird. So, so I want you to acknowledge that it sounds weird. Weird. So it only again pressure only depends on height and not on the and not on the volume and not on the shape of the container. Right? It can have the shape. Imagine that this one had another leg here. It would be the same, right? And and I say this because typically irrigation system has different branches right different legs right so if i have high pressure here and have say i have a pump here and the water is going up and up here the pressure is low as we said already say that we come back on the other on the other side of the hill you have the same pressure on the other sides on the other side too right once i had a grower that told me well it divides if i have 30 psi i have 15 here and 15 there it does not divide right it does not divide either did I convince you? Did I convince everybody? All right, I'm just I'm just gonna keep going. The other the other phenomenon the other phenomenon is called friction. So you can say that if you have a pipe with water moving, you can say well water is moving and therefore the molecule are rubbing are rubbing against the walls, and so they lose they lose pressure. Imagine that I'm walking. With my shoulder touching a wall, and and the wall is slowing me down, right? Because that there's that there's that friction of of the wall on my shoulder, right? But you can also say, look, since we have a difference in pressure, then that's that force that drives the flow, which is perfectly fine. So either you say I have a flow, therefore I have a gradient in pressure, or you can say, well, I have a gradient a gradient in pressure, therefore there must be a flow. So it's it becomes a kind of a chicken and the egg problem, but but the important thing is that you always remember that if there is movement, if there is if there is movement of water, there will be friction, and there will be uh, some loss of pressure. Now the question is how much, right? So in this pipe, do do I lose twenty psi or do I lose a tenth of a psi? If I lose a tenth of a psi, I may not even be able to pick it up with this, right? Because maybe they maybe you can only measure psi, it doesn't measure tenths of psi, right? So the idea is how do I make this pressure loss small? And now in the next slides, we're gonna talk about pressure loss for a while. And again, we're talking about the pressure loss that I have in a pipe where water where water moves. So now I wanna ask you this question. Let's say that this pipe is 100 feet long and I have some pressure loss. What happens if I make it longer? What happens if I make it 200 feet? Do I get a larger pressure loss at the end or, or, or a smaller? Do I get more pressure loss with the longer pipe? Anybody? Everybody's already sleeping completely? Okay, so yes. If the pipe is longer, I lose more pressure, right? That's kind of a no-brainer. How about if I have a smaller diameter? Who wants to tell me? If I have a skinnier pipe, do I lose more pressure or less? Anybody? Do I still have participants? Are they all sleeping? How do I? <laughs> all right. If I have a smaller pipe, I have more pressure loss. If the pipe is skinnier, that water needs to flow in a skinnier pipe. Imagine that Jerry 
Imagine that Jerry, instead of walking in a, a, a touching touching a wall with his with his shoulder, now I'm walking in a corridor that is skinnier. Now I'm touching now I'm touching the, two walls with two shoulders, right? And maybe and maybe my head also is touching the it's touching the ceiling. So now I have I have more friction on both sides. The smaller it is, the more friction I have, the more pressure I lose. Did I convince you? So now the question is, well, okay, Jerry, you're telling us that small that small pipes make us lose more pressure. So why don't we always put some big ass pipe, 12 inch? Why don't I always in all my nursery, in all my avocado grove, in all my uh, citrus grove, uh, everywhere, not in all my vineyard, everywhere, I always put a big ass 12 inch pipe. Why don't I? Who wants to tell me? Because it's expensive, right? It's expensive. It's more plastic. You have to dig a big trench, more work to move this big pipe around, more storage. Does it make sense? More labor, more everything. So there's a there's a trade off. There's a trade off between how much pressure you lose because because you have a small pipe and how much and how expensive in terms of its investment this pipe is, if you put it too big. Does it make sense? Yes. One minute to the end. Okay, we will restart in one minute. P please join us again. I don't know why this is happening. Um, what happens if I have a larger flow rate? What happens if I'm irrigating two irrigation blocks with only one main line instead of only one? Let's say that each irrigation block takes 15 PSI. Do I lose more pressure in my main line if I have 30 PSI running in it or 15 PSI? Uh, sorry. 30 gallons per minute running in it or 15 gallons per minute running in it? What if I have two Jerry's in the same corridors or crammed together that are trying to walk? Where where do I get more 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 friction? Right? More flow rate, more more friction losses I get, right? Is I, did I convince you? Perfect. So did I convince you with this with this pipe? We lose more pressure if it's longer. We lose more pressure if it's skinnier. We lose a lot more pressure if there is more flow rate in it. Did I convince everybody? Yes, no? All right, so what we just said in words is represented by this equation that is called Hayes and William equation. Equation, Hayes and Williams. Some, some, some two people with these last names invented this thing. And they said, look, your pressure loss depends on a factor multiplied by L, which is the length of the pipe. So the length of the pipe is linear. You double the length of the pipe, you double the pressure loss. That's simple, right? Then here they put Q, that is the flow rate. And notice that they have it has an exponent here that is almost two, and I, and I plotted it here. So here it's telling you that if you increase, if you increase the flow rate in this thing, the pressure loss more than doubles. For example, here, if you have a flow rate of 100 gallons per minute, the pressure loss is 15 PSI in a, in a two-inch two PVC pipe. If you double that flow rate to 200, now you get 55, right? The double would have been 30. The triple would have been 45. It, it more than tripled. We doubled the flow rate and the pressure loss more, more than tripled. Did I convince you? Did I convince you? Okay, so now Dick says, if you have a 150 feet pipe divided equally, half, three quarters, will the pressure remain the same? No, you always lose pressure. Of course, in your one inch, in your one inch section that is larger, you lose less pressure than in the, your three quarter inch pressure. And in the three quarter inch pressure, you lose less than in your super skinny one, half inch one, as long as they're the same length and as long as the flow rate is the same, right? But but you lose less pressure in the in the father pipe, like we like we we said before. So thank you, thank you, Dick, for your for your question. And at the at the bottom in the numerator, we have this inside diameter. So which is inversely related, right? It makes sense because if this is larger, if I put a, a larger pipe, if the diameter is larger, 
now the pressure loss, loss becomes smaller. So they're inversely related, right? I hope it makes sense. And notice that it has that it has an exponent that is almost five. So the diameter is the big player here. The diameter is a big player. Increasing the diameter decreases the pressure loss substantially. Substantially. Did I convince you? I hope I convinced you. And if you're not convinced in the next in the next newsletter coming from my office from the Cooperative Extension of San Diego, there will be an article where I talk about this uh, equation. And also, if you don't want to un understand it, you just want a spreadsheet where you can punch in the numbers. And Dick, I, I, I encourage you to download that spreadsheet from my website and play around with numbers and say, okay, let me see. Let me put it at three quarter. Let me see how the pressure loss is. Let's put one inch. Let's see how much the pressure loss is. Let's put half inch. Let's see how the pressure loss is. And if you don't understand how to use that spreadsheet, please give me a call and I will be happy to walk you through it. And now this is something similar to what I believe that Dick suggested, which is called People call it telescoping. And once I was at this nursery and they had a four inch, four inch pipe here. And then here they have lateral lines that go and serve sprinklers on either side. And then here it becomes three inches. The main line becomes three inches and then it becomes one, one and a half inch. And at the end it became one inch. So this is what I call telescoping. And, and, uh, and I want you to understand why people use it, why people do it. So here I drew I drew what it would look like if the main line was two inches all the time and what it would look like with telescoping. So here we have two inches diameter, then it becomes smaller, it becomes one and a half, and here it becomes one inch, right? So as we said earlier, as we said earlier, the more flow rate you have in it, the more pressure you lose. So but here at each lateral line, we are losing some flow rate because here five gallons per minute go and serve this sprinkler and here five gallons per minute go and, and serve this sprinkler, right? Assuming that our sprinklers have five gallons a minute nozzles. So if I have 90 gallons per minute here, I will have 80 here, I will have 70, 60, 50, 40, 30. Does it make sense? So now my flow rate diminishes. My, 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 my flow rate becomes smaller and smaller. And so some super smart guy, some super smart guy must have said, well, I'm smart. Now I have a smaller flow rate. I can afford, I can afford a smaller pipe. I can afford to buy a one and a half inch pipe instead of a two inch pipe for this sec se section and a one inch pipe for this section. So I will save money on plastic. That's the objective. That's the objective. It's done to save money on pipe size. Now, the objection there is like, well, yeah, okay, you may save some money on plastic, but then here you have to install the reducer from two inches to one and eight and, and, and a half. Here you need another reducer. And then the the saddles that you put here or the or the or the crosses that you put there, they need to be all different sizes. And so now you have more inventory and now you have more labor to install all that stuff and to carry all that stuff around. So you may not save as much as you think you save. And then and then there's not a lot of difference. In, in, in how much you save between a two inch pipe and a one and a half, right? I mean, if it was 12 inches, well, okay, sure. But there is not a lot of difference. So you don't save a lot of money. And, and, and you may be better off by keeping it two inches. But the important thing, you can do whatever you want, but the important thing is that you're aware, you're aware of why whoever does this, does this. It's not because, it's not because what I want to be clear today, if you learn only one thing today, I want this to be clear. It's not because making the diameter smaller squishes the water and so increases pressure. I'm going to say it again. It is not true. It is not true. It's a common misconception. It's a common misconception that forcing water, reducing the diameter of a pipe forces water in a smaller volume and therefore increases the pressure. It is not true. It's not true. So reducing the volume 
makes the pressure loss larger. And here and here in this red in this red uh, numbers, I just used Hazen Williams equation to calculate the pressure loss for each of these thirty feet section. Okay, I hope that now everybody is completely confused about this. And now I want to give you another element. So we said that we have this elevation effect of how things are, how high things are. And then we have this friction effect of water traveling in a pipe. Now, these two things sum each other. They're additive. So if I lose 10 PSI because I'm going up the hill and I'm losing 10 PSI because this many gallons per minute in that two inch pipe make me lose 10 PSI. Now, if I'm going up the hill in that pipe, now I'm going to lose 20 PSI. 10 for a reason and 10 for another reason. Does it make sense? So in this example here, if I have the pump down here, now I'm losing pressure for for two reasons, for, for, for friction and for elevation. And this is the reason why if this if each of these triangle is a is a is a valve serving a block imagine that here there are four four irrigation blocks it is better to design the irrigation system so it goes up the hill and then it it distributes water downhill instead of distributing water uphill because distributing water uphill you will have a larger a larger difference in pressure between the blocks. This block will be getting 20 PSI and this block will get 30 PSI. Very big difference. This other way, if you go up now, they're more, they're more even because now the counterbalancing effect, you're going downhill and so, and so gravity elevation is adding, is adding pressure while your friction is removing it. So they counterbalance each other. And so notice this, these two blocks have almost the same pressure. Notice that the total pressure is lower, right? We, got, we went down to 18 here. Here we're already at 20, right? So you will burn totally more pressure here, but we don't care about burning pressure. That's what pumps are for, right? We have pumps to, to create pressure. We don't care about it. What we care about is, is having even pressure, even pressure among our blocks and within the block to uh, to irrigate more evenly, right? Did I convince you? Is everybody com is everybody convinced? So don't do this. Don't do this. Don't irrigate uphill and don't do this. Okay, so now to wake everybody up. Uh, yesterday, David sent me this <laughs> sent me this text that I don't understand. So somebody somebody. I mean, I'm happy to teach you. To explain to you how Hazen William equation works, but you, may you please explain to me uh, David's joke. So I answered, haha, thanks, because I wanted to be nice. <laughs> but um, I don't understand the joke, but I still want to acknowledge the contribution of David. Hi, David. I hope he's listening to us at home. And so, uh, yeah, this is David's jokes. And I thought I used it in the middle of the, of the, of the talk to wake everybody up. And now that I woke you up, um, why don't we like uneven pressure? Well, because uneven pressure gives uneven irrigation, right? Say that I bought this emitter and um, the, the, the seller told me, look, at 10 PSI, it gives you one gallon per hour. And then I install it in my hose and I'm irrigating my, what are they, vincas or impatients. I'm irrigating my flowers and and... At the beginning of the hose, I have 15 PSI, and this emitter is actually putting out 1.2 gallons per hour instead of one. At the end of the hose, I have 6 PSI, and it's putting out 0.8 gallons per hour instead of one. And so this plant is getting a lot of water. This plant is very, getting very little water, and my irrigation is not uniform. Yes, chat, chat. On a 30 degrees slope, how much pressure will you gain? every 15 feet okay so you need to calculate so there is some trigonometry there that i can help you uh but not now when we are offline we can talk about if you have 15 15 feet how much is this so we can calculate that together on a 30 degree slope but then and then once we have that vertical that h that height we can uh, um 
we can say that every every 2.3 feet is one psi or every 23 feet is 10 psi so dick if you send me an email we can talk offline and we can do some trigonometry together and i'll get you the answer but i really appreciate you participating and so i was saying these drippers they will give less water to my avocados right the avocado at the end of the line will get less water than the avocado at the beginning of the line or maybe the avocado at the top at the top of the slope will get less water than the one at the bottom of the slope so some super smart irrigation engineer invented a pressure compensating emitter an emitter called pressure compensating and they have the the principle is that inside there is this uh, this disc that is flexible and when there is when there is more pressure the pressure pushes the the that disc to plug to partially plug the emitter and when there is less pressure the the the, the diaphragm kind of relaxes and opens the the orifice and that way that way these emitters are less sensitive to pressure differences so at 15 psi that emitter will still put out one gallon per hour and at 6 psi it will still put out one gallon per hour and now my vincas are happy and now my my avocados are all getting the same water so this is what this is what people mean by pressure compensating emitters and this is the principle this is the principle of how they function now when you buy emitters you see in the in the manufacturer specification something that is called the flow rate pressure relationship that is a super scary graph like this so today i want to give you some tool to be a little bit less scared by this by these uh, graphs and all they're trying to tell you is look at 20 psi i put out this flow rate at this psi i put out the same flow rate you see it's flat so it doesn't matter what pressure you give me within this range notice that below 10 psi then it doesn't work anymore but within this range they're trying to tell you look between maybe 12 psi and 60 psi it doesn't matter what pressure you give me i always give you this same flow rate of 211 gallons per hour right that's what we want these other ones these other ones they're not telling you that they're telling you look at 8 psi i give you 0.25 gallon per hour but at 20 psi i give you 0.32 so it's still flat, right? It's a good thing that this line is flat. It's, they're telling you, look, the, the flow rate is not very sensitive to pressure. So it's good that it's flat. It would, it would be worse if, if it was steep, right? It would be worse if it was steep, but it's not completely flat. So when they're truly pressure compensating emitters, this line, this pressure, this flow rate pressure relationship needs to be flat. Okay, now to wake you up again, we're going to have this hands-on activity where we get a, a drill and we drill a hole. I hope I can do it here. I hope I can do it here while I have you on Zoom without hurting myself. So you drill a hole. I hope you can see that I just drilled the hole in this PVC elbow. And then you get this thing. You get this thing that is called a tap and and when you buy this this tap it comes it comes with the same size um bits so these two things go together you got to buy them together you got to buy them of the appropriate size and then and then you kind of just screw this tap in and then you get the wrench to screw it in all the way and while you do that it cuts i think i hope you can see the burrs there it cuts threads in this pvc now i'm doing it a little fast because i don't want to bore you at home you see these things are coming out these little pieces of pvc those were the threads that were cut Can you see? Can you see the threads inside now? I hope you can see them from home. And then you take this Schrader valve, you put some Teflon. Now for the sake of time, I'm not gonna put the Teflon. And then you screw the thing in. 
and now it's watertight. Now you can run your irrigation system, and when there is pressure in this in this pipe, you can show up with your gauge and push it in here and measure the pressure. So this is all the time I have to show you this today, but if you're interested in this, or if you're interested in me coming to your ranch or to your nursery or to your uh, citrus grove or to your avocado grove or to your winery um, or to your um, vineyard, to do this, please email me or please call me. And now I wanna give everybody a chance to win $10, here $10. And the question is, how, how, well, I don't have $10, so we have to use 20, we have to use $20. Uh, how does pressure affect radius, the flow, and the precipitation rate of sprinklers? So this is a sprinkler that I see out there pretty often at nurseries. And so I downloaded the specs. And, and let's look at this nozzle that is full. Actually, this is the half, right? It only spray half, 180 degrees. But let's look at this full. They tell us, look, at 15 PSI, you get these specs. At 20 PSI, you get these specs. At 30 PSI, you get these specs. It doesn't matter if you grow vegetables and you have impact sprinklers. It doesn't matter if you have micro sprinklers on avocados. It's all the same. So the question is, what happens to the radius as the pressure increases? The radius is how far how far this thing will spray, right? It's basically the distance between this the, the sprinkler head and where the water gets. It's this distance, right? What happens to the radius as the pressure gets larger? Who wants to tell me in the chat? For $20? Nobody wants to win $20? Top crowd tonight. Ah, okay, okay. Somebody said it. Somebody said it. Gets larger. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Jim. Gets larger. So now, so now the sprinkler is irrigating a larger area, right? A bigger, a bigger that that circle gets bigger. Now, what happens to the flow rate? The flow rate is how much, how much water, how much volume per time gets out of that sprinkler, right? You could go there with the bucket if you were able to, you know, convey it all inside the bucket, concentrate it all inside the bucket. What happens to the flow rate, Jim? Tell me, Jim, gets larger as well. Thank you, Jim. So now if I put more pressure, the sprinkler irrigates a larger area and also the flow rate becomes larger. Now, what happens to the precipitation rate? What happens to the precipitation rate? And think about it before. Think about what's the precipitation rate? What's the precipitation rate? And why do we worry about the precipitation rate so much? And 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 Jim, please don't, don't guess it. Otherwise, I, I owe you... 20 bucks. So precipitation rate is inches per hour, right? What's the depth? What's the depth of water that we apply in time? And that's an important, this is an important number because that's how we decide how long I should run my sprinklers, right? Should I run my sprinkler 30 minutes or or one hour or 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 five minutes? Right? So this precipitation rate here is an important number. Jim, where are you when I need you? What happens to the precipitation rate? Now, it turns out that precipitation rate, it's the flow rate divided by the area. So now we said the flow rate gets larger, the volume gets larger, but now the volume is also distributed by a larger area because the radius got larger. Remember Jim said us that, told us that the, that the radius gets larger? Jim, this is your last chance to, to win $20. So the answer is, it depends. The answer is, you don't know. The answer is, but those heads can only end up so much pressure than it volatilizes. Yes, it's true. It's true. Dick is right. Dick is right. Then it becomes misting, right? If you give too much pressure. But we were talking about the pressure within the range within the range uh, uh, recommended by the manufacturer, right? Between 15 and 30. Of course, you run it at 60, you get a lot of mist, then the, the wind blows, all the mist goes away, you lose, you lose a lot of for, 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 for wind drift, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But within these pressures, 
the radius get larger, the flow gets larger, the precipitation rate, you don't know. You don't know. You have to either look it up if they tell you, like in this case, more often they don't tell you. You need to calculate it. You need to calculate it. And I'm a stickler, again, I'm a stickler about this precipitation rate because it's that number that you need to know about your irrigation system so you can say, ah, okay, today I need to apply 0.1 inch and this thing applies at, at 0.2 inches per hour. I need to run my irrigation system for, for 30 minutes, right? Yes, Jim. Jim is confused. <laughs> yeah, you're not the only one, Jim. <laughs> we all are. We all are. But thank you. But don't give up. Don't give up. Call me, Jim, and I'll help you. And I'll help you unconfuse you. Okay. So now, in my last five minutes, I want to talk about pressure regulators. This is a map of an irrigation system where the pressure is represented by the uh, purple number: 50 psi, 40 psi, 20, 18. This block was getting 18. This block was getting 15, this block was getting 12. So really uneven pressures, right? So what we could have done here is, is install a pressure regulator that reduces pressure to a desired value. Uh, so here we could have installed a pressure, a 12 PSI pressure regulator, and now we reduced the pressure from 18 to 12, from 15 to 12. So it burns, a pressure regulator is a thing that burns energy that same energy that you paid with your water bill at the pump, that same electricity that you paid, it burns it. So be aware of how you use it. You don't want to spend, you don't want to put a really big pump and then you have 80 PSI here and then you burn them down to 12, right? Because it's all energy that you paid for. So you, you got to be aware that, that, the, that, the, that the pressure regulator only reduce pressure. It doesn't increase it. And these are all examples of pressure regulator installed at sprinkler heads or at hoses or on, on PVC coming out on the, of each valve at the nursery. And again, it only reduces pressure. This is another example where I'm measuring at the pressure regulator. Here I have 56 PSI and the 30 PSI pressure regulator. So here I get 56 PSI and the pressure regulator uh, burns it down to 30. So now the sprinkler head is seeing 30. But in this case, I hope you can see here, it says 37.9 and here it says 50. This is a 50 PSI pressure regulator. I know you cannot see very well, but I promise it was. So in this case, this thing may as well not be there because it's not doing anything because the pressure is not above 50, right? If, it's, if, it's be, is it, if it was above 50, it would burn it down to 50. But if it's below, it doesn't bring it up to 50. Does it make sense? So in this case, nothing is working that pressure regulator is not doing anything right in this other example again the purple numbers are pressure um, and i have pressure that goes all the way from 55 56 down to 39 in this case if i have selected some sprinklers that work well at 40 psi and each of them had the pressure regulator at 40 psi then now all my sprinklers are seeing 40 psi except I guess this one that says 39 and this one that says 39, but now everything is equalized, right? I cannot put pressure regulator of 50 PSI and put and, and put sprinklers that need 50 PSI because all these guys would, would be running at low pressure. Does it make sense? I hope it makes sense. Um, so now I wanna close with this. I wanna close with this. We said that pressure regulator do not increase pressure. And we also said that that common misconception of squishing a pipe, of reducing the the the, the diameter of a pipe, um, we said that does in, in reality does not increase pressure. So now I want to ask you, what are the only two things, the only two things in the world, in this world, that can increase pressure? What are the two things that in this world can increase? increased pressure and, and of, of one we we spoke we, we talked about very specifically and the other one we kind of mentioned it and then all right all right gravity oh jim you got 20 20 dollars you got it right jim check this out gravity and the pump a change in elevation and the pump so for posterity for posterity please take a screenshot of this 
a change in elevation and a pump and exactly exactly jim got it right so thank you jim thank you jim yeah yeah dick also got one right thank you guys thank you for your participation and now in the last minute i want to tell you how a pump works a pump works on a curve so you have this particular 10 HP pump, you are forced to be on this curve. When I was a kid, we had the pump at home and, and I was showering and when my mother would open the would open the uh, the sink to do the dishes, then the pressure of the of the of my shower would go down. And then I had to open the door and yell at my mother, right? Why is that? Because if you increase the flow rate, the pressure goes down. Is this is this curve? They're inversely related right so sometimes i work with i worked with growers that had to irrigate only one one block because they couldn't irrigate two they were they were they were needing only a small flow rate and the pressure was too high and so they would put a they would half close a valve to burn all that excessive pressure right because you if you want a smaller flow rate now that that pump gives you a high pressure there's a way around this that is called the vfd that is an electronic device that is expensive and has a and has a pressure transducer, which is this picture here, and it measures the pressure, and it slows the pump down, and you actually can hear it. You can hear it when it says ramping up, ramping up, and so that way, that thing that is called the VFD allows you to be below the curve. You tell it, look, I want to always be at 70 PSI. You, I, always, I always want to be at 60 PSI. So it will be on this line. It will be on this line. But notice you cannot be above your curve. You, cannot, you still cannot exceed the capacity of your curve. This particular picture comes from a, from a nursery where I have a, 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 a grower that has trouble with this pump irrigating with sprinkler, with impact sprinkler irrigation, the last block. And he tells me, ah, oh, Jerry, but I had a DFD. I don't understand why I don't get enough pressure. And and the answer is like, a VFD cannot give you more pressure than your capacity. It can give you less. It can give you less flow rate at the same pressure, but it cannot give you more. You're still, you cannot still go above this curve. So now it's uh, 2 p.m. I really appreciate your time. This is the evaluation. Please uh, tell me if you liked it or if you didn't or how we can improve ourselves. I want to thank the Farm Bureau that is written right there that they support us. They support us. And thank you to the Irrigated Land Group. And thank you to Tasha. And thank you to Cynthia. And 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 thank you, to to again, to the Farm Bureau for supporting us. And uh, it's been a pleasure to spend one hour with you guys. And um, congratulations, you just got one hour of, of, uh, uh, of education for your um, irrigated land group for the Ag Order. And, um, and I will see you next time.